It's been a tough week here on the Power 5, I know it. Still, 145, 125, and 10 overall record on the show uh, that we've been on over the last few months. And now, it's Saturday, which means college football. And that has been my forte this season. Back-to-back -back incredible weeks in CFB here on the Power 5. Not to mention with my client plays. I'll be getting to that a little bit later on. But two Saturdays ago, I went 4-1 and one here on the Power 5 in college football. And then last week, including our early week look-aheads, it was 6-1-2 and two overall with the nine plays we gave out earlier this week. In case you missed it, on Tuesday, I gave you Maryland plus 7.5 versus USC. Then on Wednesday, it was Arkansas plus 3 against LSU. And Oregon State plus 7 versus UNLV. You can go back uh, on the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Check those out in the archives. Don't forget also, we need Cincy to win straight up against Arizona State to complete a money line parlay that started off on the right foot with Virginia Tech on Thursday. Got all that? Good. I've got three unranked teams getting points that you'll want to take this week, plus my two cents on the two biggest games of the weekend. Number seven, Alabama at number 11, Tennessee, and number five, Georgia at number one, Texas. Feel free to let me know what you think of these selections down in the comments section below, and if you agree, be sure to smash that like button. We start... Number one with Nebraska, plus six and a half at number 16, Indiana. Look, the Hoosiers have already been quite kind to us. At least if you listen to me back on the summer on Wager Talk today with Prez and Teddy, I said to play Indiana over five and a half wins for the season. Wouldn't you know? All it took was six games for that bet to cash. IU is 6-0 and straight up for the first time since 1967, and they are ranked in the top 25, like I mentioned just a moment ago. Offense, second in the country in points per game. Indiana scored 41 or more in all three Big Ten games. But let's look at who the Hoosiers have faced, guys. Northwestern, Maryland, the UCLA in conference play, not to mention Charlotte, FCS Western Illinois, and FIU in the non-con. Nebraska is by far the toughest opponent yet for Kurt Signetti. And the Cornhuskers should also probably be undefeated coming into this game. Their only loss came in overtime to Illinois. Nebraska, they've got a top 10 defense in the country in terms of points and yards allowed on both a per game and per play basis. I think that's key to the handicap here. Not saying the Cornhuskers pull the outright upset here, but they could. And when they lose, it's often by one score. So take the points, Nebraska head coach Matt Rule 20-10 and 10 against the number, 67% ATS all-time as a road underdog. All right, number two, also at noon Eastern. I like Auburn, plus four at number 19, Missouri. Auburn has definitely taken sharp money throughout the week. You look at the wagertalk.com live odds screen. They open plus seven for this SEC matchup of Tigers, both teams nicknamed Tigers. Uh, and you want to recall two weeks ago, I had a 4% best bet going against Missouri. That was with Texas A&M. Aggies pounded Mizzou by a score of 41 to 10. Sure, Mizzou bounces back last week with a 45 to 3 road win, but that was against UMass for crying out loud. Back in Columbia this week, but as I said prior to that A&M loss, Mizzou is a team I came into 2024 looking to fade. Thought they were a bit fortunate last season against a soft uh, schedule, at least soft by SEC standards. And prior to losing at A&M, Mizzou could have lost here at home to Vandy, and they trailed Boston College by double digits. Meanwhile, Auburn, they've been about as unlucky as it gets uh, this season. Three losses where each instance they outgained their opponents, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Cal, only to lose the turnover battle, minus nine in those three games. Ugh. I think the line move speaks volumes here. I agree with it. Auburn plus four. Going to the nighttime slate, how about UCF? Plus 13 and a half at number nine, Iowa State. Cyclones are still undefeated. One of only 11 teams in the entire crunch country that could say that. But this is a lot of points to be laying, even in Ames, against a UCF team that I thought was ready to compete for a Big 12 championship a few weeks ago. Now, the last three weeks have seen the Knights lose to Colorado, Florida, and Cincinnati. I actually faded them against Cincinnati last week here on the Power 5. But double digits feels like a big spread in this matchup. UCF can run the ball no matter who's the quarterback, and I think they keep it closer than the experts think. 7.30 Eastern time kickoff there. All right, now to the two big games, which admittedly I struggled with a bit coming up with an angle for you guys. I know you guys want to bet them, though, so wanted to give you something. 
Number seven, Alabama at number 11, Tennessee. Is it a bit surprising to see the Crimson Tide favored on the road against a team I have power rated pretty similarly? Yeah, it is. But I'm going to go Tennessee team total under 27 and a half in this one. Now, I know Alabama's defense is what cost them against Vandy, not to mention allowed both Georgia and South Carolina to stay within one possession. However, this Tennessee offense has been trending in reverse the past few games. 25 points against Oklahoma, only 14 at Arkansas, and only 23 last week in an overtime win versus Florida. Nico, he's got the lowest QBR among all SEC quarterbacks, so lower scoring game than expected from the home team here. Tennessee under 27 and a half. That is a 330 Eastern kickoff, of course, from Knoxville. Last game on the Power Five today. At 7.30, it's the big one. Number five, Georgia at number one, Texas. Pretty crazy to see Kirby Smart as an underdog, isn't it? But Texas has certainly been the most impressive team in the country to this point. Game is in Austin, so hard to argue with the Longhorns being the favorites here. Nevertheless, I'm going Georgia plus three in the first half. You can even get plus three and a half at DraftKings. Look, after playing so poorly early on in that Alabama game, the last thing Georgia wants here is another bad start. And the one asterisk, that comes with this Texas team right now is they haven't really played anybody. I know they beat Michigan and Oklahoma both by double digits, but those teams weren't as good as advertised. Let's be honest here. I see a very hard-fought close game here, at least early on. All right, let's recap the Power Five as we always do. Number one, Nebraska plus six and a half at Indiana. Number two, Auburn plus four at Missouri. Number three, UCF plus 13 and a half at Iowa State. Number four, Tennessee team total under 27 and a half. Number five, Georgia plus three in the first half. Again, if you didn't do so already, go ahead and let me know what you think of those selections down in the comments section below. Do not be shy about dropping your best bets for the weekend as well. I always enjoy reading those. And also feel free to guess what defunct team's logo this is, by the way, on my t-shirt. Uh, I will. There will be, well, no prize, but uh, I don't know. I'll shout you out if whoever gets it right first. Of course, for all my best bets, you can go to wt.buzz slash BP. As you know, I do have the number one football record this season at Wager Talk. 68% combined in NFL and college, up 48.2 units of profit, pardon me. And that includes a 9-0 run in college football, including 7-0 the last two weeks. Yes, nine straight winners in college football. I am number one in CFB the last 30 days. You'll be able to get my entire Saturday card for just $29 uh, to get all the plays. Obviously, you're going to have to act before noon Eastern. It's going to likely end up being four plays total for Saturday from me. By the way, you go all the way back to April. I am on an astonishing 56 22 and 1 run on Saturdays across all sports. Saturday's my day, so make sure you're on board. WT.buzz slash BP. That's going to do it for Saturday's edition of the Power Five. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, smash that like button. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.